If you're not a registered voter in Burlington, you can't vote tonight. Um, if you're not registered, however, and you do live in Burlington, you can register at the table and get a ballot. Um, the other thing is uh, that people need to know, according to our progressive party bylaws, um, you also need to consider yourself a member of the Vermont Progressive Party. And to become a, to be a member of the Vermont Progressive Party, uh, that is anyone um, who supports our Progressive Party principles, they are on the reverse side of your agenda. You need to subscribe to those uh, if you want to be a member of the Progressive Party. And uh, if you want to participate in your caucus, uh, in this caucus, I should say, um, you cannot participate in another party's caucus. So you can't participate in the Democratic Party caucus, to be clear, or the Republican caucus. No, no double dipping. Um, lastly, um, if you have not yet signed in, um, you need to sign in and make sure that you're on the voter checklist uh, to get a ballot for the ward endorsement as well as for the mayoral endorsement. And again, if you're not currently registered in Burlington but live here, um, you can register tonight in order to vote tonight. Okay, lastly, uh, for folks who are gathering in the uh, ward caucuses, uh, candidates uh, should each get three minutes to make their case, uh, answer uh, question, leave time um, for answering uh, questions. And um, we, you should have, if you signed in, uh, received your award, uh, your award ballot. You're only allowed to vote in your ward where you're registered, not in some other ward. Did I miss anything, Josh? Right, and then obviously, um, if it's a contested endorsement in an individual ward, um, you know, some. You need to get two folks to, to count the ballots and um, then report back to uh, the plenary when we all get back together again as, as a whole. Probably not, given that Adam Roof did not show up, which is awesome. Thank you. Nice. All right, uh, Josh says we have uh, 20 minutes to complete this. Because like, if he could have taken it, then probably. Our board caucuses, uh, whoever the captain is for each board, if you have voted, your candidates, please, uh, board captain, come forward and let me know the results of your vote. So if you're going to register, or like at the same time, anytime, anytime, anybody, anybody can register. I'm just kidding. I don't need to. I can put it down. Oh yeah. Ward one. Has ward one finished voting? We have a meeting, and uh, Ward 1 uh, Progressive Caucus cast one unanimous ballot for our current city councilor, Sharon Busher. Ward 2. And Ward 2 also unanimously endorsed Max Tracy for re-election.
progressive candidate, progressive caucus endorsed candidate for Ward 5 is Jesse Warren. How's it looking back there, Ward 3? So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Max Tracy. I, I'm the current Ward 2 City Councilor, and I uh, just got the nomination to, to run again in Ward 2. I'm incredibly excited about that. Uh, and what I'm also excited about is the turnout in this room. We're standing room only here. This is, I think, the first time I've ever seen this in a progressive caucus. And I think that this, this speaks to the fact that we're really looking for a different direction uh, in City Hall. And I think that that really starts in March. And, so, and it really starts here, honestly. And so it's not just about showing up for a caucus, but it's really about continuing that political involvement uh, in whatever way you're able to. I know a lot of folks are incredibly busy and are leaders in the community in this room uh, and have a lot of different responsibilities. But uh, if this meeting feels exciting to you and you're excited about the people that come out of this meeting, I would encourage you to, to continue to stay involved uh, in these March races because we need a lot of support. We need uh, you know people going out and, and doing door knocking, people doing leafleting groups, people uh, contributing money to to these candidates because uh, you know progressive candidates don't take corporate money. We don't uh, do that, and so we need uh, you know grassroots, uh, you know small donations from people, uh, in, from individual contributors. We need those that support to really make uh, the change that we want to see a reality uh, in March. So please continue to stay involved coming out of this caucus uh, because that and that alone is what we need to, to really make sure that we, we really see the change uh, come uh, March 6th. Thanks. Any other candidates who are going to be running like to address the crowd? Hi, how's everybody doing? Um, my name's J.F. Carter. comments really brief. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the UVM Progs who have been organizing UVM campus all year. And we got a huge, huge student turnout, so um, I'm really thankful for that. And uh, yeah, let's get ready to work. <laughs> Thank you. Charles? Uh, you know, I, I think one of my campaign slogans is going to be that there is a Burlington difference, and I think that all of you here tonight shows that there's a Burlington difference from the status quo. And the next time you see me, I will be carrying a big broom because I think we need a clean sweep. Hey, folks. Uh, my name is Jesse Warren. Um, I'm the candidate for Ward 5. All right. um, yeah. Um, so um, I'm just here to, I'm, I'm very proud to live in this city, which I know has such a long tradition of fighting for people who've been left behind in the past, low, low income people, middle income people, um, people who've, um, who've been forgotten. And so I'm proud to be a part of the city and continue that tradition. And I just want to say thank you to the Ward 5 um, uh, residents who, who nominated me for this, and I'm very humbled, and I'll be working really hard alongside all these other great candidates and everyone who um, cares so much about this city to make sure we take back the mayor's office for whoever we nominate tonight, as well as uh, control the city council. So thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And there is this 
quote that says, leadership is about showing up. You all leaders, and you all have my vote. Thank you for coming. <laughs> For a city that was established in 1773, and for a new American who came here 10 years ago, and for a new American who became city council three months ago, the same new American is here representing Bernie Sanders at the Burlington City Council. The same new American is also seeking your engagement. Voting for a candidate to go to the city council or to go to the state is not enough. What we need is people to keep on showing up, to keep on becoming leaders, to keep on making sure that every single resident in our city can strive. It's not about donation, it's not about voting, but it is about engaging, which means send an email, call your constituents, that's what matters. Please keep on doing just that for the future, for our future, the future of our children, and for the next generation. Together, we win. Thank you all. Thank you so much um, for running, all of you. Um, I will stop holding you hostage now. You guys can go back to your seats. Um, and we do have results for board. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I jumped the gun a little bit. Ward 3. So we had 62 people voting in the Ward 3 caucus. James Lockridge received 20 votes and Brian Pine received 42 votes. <laughs> process is a very humbling one. I did this many years ago. I was much younger. I knew a lot less. It didn't scare me very much at the time. But this process has really been uh, a remarkable process, reconnecting with um, many people that I see around town. And I look forward to the process of bringing more voices to the table, bringing more people into the process, really looking at um, city council as a way to ensure that the people's wishes are, uh, are heard and delivered at the council level. And I really hope folks will stay engaged. This is an incredible turnout, really inspiring to have folks here. And I hope people will stay engaged in this process. Thank you very much. So I think they're going to get a picture over there. And someone actually brought it to my attention that I never introduced myself and said who the heck I am. Uh, so hi, um, my name is Kelly Mangan. I'm the chair of the Burlington Progressive Party. Um, and thank you all once again for being here. Uh, Martha Abbott, who is the, um, the treasurer of the state Progressive Party, would like to just say really quickly um, a little bit about the organization. Yes. Councillors, please line up for a photo op. How about we have Martha talk while the photo op is going on? Hi, everybody. This is so exciting. I cannot believe how many people are here. Uh, a lot of us have been uh, working on this political alternative for some time, and it is just really wonderful to see so many people here and excited about the process. Now that you are members in good standing of the Vermont Progressive Party, uh, it is uh, one of the responsibilities of uh, party membership that you help keep our organization afloat. Uh, I'm the treasurer of the organization. We have one fabulous staff person, and that is Josh Wonski, our We run this organization uh, very fiscally conservatively, um, and but we do need to pay our wonderful staff person and our office rent and keep the lights on. So just as we believe as taxpayers that it is our responsibility to fund the commons and the services that we all need as a group, it is also our responsibility to keep the party afloat financially. We hope you'll contribute to all these wonderful candidates. 
We hope you'll remember that the entire effort and ongoing over 17 years now uh, comes from the less exciting prospect of donating actually to the party itself. There are two ways you can do this. We're going to pass around these cans tonight <coughs> through the crowd. And in these cans, there are uh, two things. There is an ACH form, which if you are willing to become a monthly donor, you can give us your bank account number and tell us how much per month you're willing to donate and get that back to us. There are envelopes if you just want to put cash or a check in them. We must have your name and address by state law for our campaign finance reporting. So don't just put $20 in an envelope without putting your name on it, please. Um, you can also use a credit card to be a monthly donor if that is your preference. And you can use these envelopes to do that as well. So please join us. Um, we'd love to have you fill these out tonight, but you can of course take them home and mail them in. So we're going to pass these around and thank you very much for being here and thank you for your support. All right, so I'm now going to open up the floor to nominations for endorsement for mayor. Do I have any nominations? Developers accountable 
uh, to fund uh, some of our social programs for young people, uh, for uh, 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 seniors, uh, you know, uh, programs uh, for uh, you know, those folks who are struggling, you know, and, and our opioid crisis. crisis. Uh, we, we, we have a lot to go around, and I think there's a lot of work to do in between elections. You know, uh, some of that work it has to do with our budget. You know, our, our general budget, which is really decided, you know, um, by the mayor and the city council. And I think uh, more folks should be involved in our process. Um, so, uh, and really humbled by the team that we have uh, behind us on this campaign. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful uh, t to my partner for um, agreeing, this, agreeing to do this uh, with me. Um, I'm grateful for, for my neighbors who uh, put up with my, you know, my bad, you know, my, my attitude, you know. Um, and uh, I'm, 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 re I'm really grateful, you know, that you know, people are out, you know, and I just hope that this is it. I hope that, you know, we can find things to do, you know, uh, if not every day, you know, uh, at least once a month, you know, of the year, so that we're all um, included in our uh, democratic process on a regular basis. Thank you so much. So I'm Selena Colburn, I'm a former city councilor and uh, now a freshman, and they never let you forget it, state legislature, state legislator in Montpelier. And I'm, I'm here to nominate Karina Driscoll for the request of the blessings and the curses I think of being affiliated with progressive politics and the progressive party is that you are often get to choose between two really great people with rich experience an awesome vision and uh, meaningful engagement with their community and that that's very clearly the choice that we have tonight but I'm nominating Karina after encouraging her for many months to jump into the the mayor's race in this election cycle, and being inspired by her vision for a more inclusive and participatory approach to leading our city. I've known Karina for over 30 years. I met her through something called the Mayor's Youth Office that then Mayor Sanders established um, back in the day that was a really innovative, incredible program for kids to experience civic engagement, whether it was running a newspaper to comment on city issues or building a teen center from the ground up basically with our bare hands um, and really understanding how we could change our city as young people. I've watched over the past several years with some sadness as Burlington has drifted away from commitments to public assets like that very teen center we built together, 242 Maine, Memorial Auditorium, the Moran Plan, and most recently, Burlington Telecom. And I've been disappointed both as a city councilor and as a resident with leadership that too often puts prepackaged solutions and foregone conclusions in front of us and calls a choice. Karina brings really deep experience in local government and in our community. She served on the school board. She served on the city council. She served in the state house. And she's worked in the mayor's office before resigning over philosophical differences. She's worked with our local nonprofits, run a small business, and supported our schools as a parent volunteer. She's more qualified with more public sector experience than our incumbent mayor uh, was when he ran the first time. And she's been actively involved in the Progressive Party as a co-chair with David Zuckerman back um, when Peter Clavel was mayor and serving as an elected progressive official. But she's also shown a willingness to work with Democrats, to work with independents, 
and an ability to bring people together. And if we're going to set this city on a new path in March, it's going to take a coalition that works across party lines. And I believe that Karina is capable of that. And I think it's critically important uh, as we look at the federal landscape, we have a chance for cities to lead the nation on issues like racial justice, like climate change, like affordable housing and income inequality. So I'm getting the zero minutes here, so I'm going to turn it over, I hope, to Karina. But I am so excited um, by all of the turnout tonight and by the message that I've been hearing from Karina over the last several months. And I hope we can work together to get this done in a grassroots way this March. Thank you for welcoming me into the caucus tonight and considering standing with me as I move forward on this journey. But first, let's go back again, but back a bit. This is not my first time standing up at a progressive caucus asking for a vote. I have been here before. I began my public service as a school board member back in the late 90s. While on the school board, we were fighting over the school budget and I fought for a position that then served H.O. Wheeler School called the Behavioral Specialist. I worked hard to bring out working and low-income families to advocate for the need for additional support services in the schools, so essential to ensuring their children's success in school. We saved the position. It was a stressful budget session, and we did end up calling in the mediator, Ira Lobel, when budget negotiations got tough. I worked hard to make sure teachers were respected and heard through the process when talks were hard. While on the school board, I actively engaged the conversation when the superintendent brought forth the concept of charter schools. I, with other school board members, including Kathy Connolly, fought for magnet schools to ensure that the socioeconomic status of our kids was more even throughout the district. And that conversation carried over into my next position, and now we have two magnet schools in the Old North End. We're standing in one here, and the other one is IAA, just around the I decided to run for state legislator when progressive sta state legislator Terry Baricious approached me. Terry is here in the house. I know I've seen him. Uh, he shared that he'd been watching what I prioritized and how I worked on the school board and was impressed. He said he held Burlington's sole lone seat between the two two-seat districts and he was sure it was, would be eliminated by redistricting, but he thought I might like to have a shot. So I went for it. And while in the legislature, I fought against the attacks on financial privacy, I worked hard to advocate for fair education funding. I fought hard to protect homeless and runaway youth. We fought criminalization, uh, we fought the criminalization of the act of harboring a runaway because I advocated for kids who had to leave home because their parents might have been the greatest th threat to their well-being. I worked hard to pass accessory unit legislation, making it unlawful for cities and towns to forbid homeowners from creating accessory units up to 30% of their houses because it created more housing and it helped people afford to stay in theirs. I fought against parental notification legislation, which aimed to interfere with a young woman's right to determine when she was ready to become a parent. I need some water. <laughs> After redistricting, we did in fact lose that single seat district and I made the choice not to run against the progressives on either side of me. Uh, either the districts on either side and that's when I chose to run for Burlington City Council as a progressive and while on the council I learned that we tackle issues that impact the day-to-day -day of our city and this is where I found my true passion I advocated for issues that impacted the city that we all love I fought for livable wage I advocated for the development of Burlington's waterfront to include a skate park and to allow for affordable housing to be built there I advocated for landlord licensing which would mean you would be required to be licensed to rent property in the city. This way, if you were not a great landlord, your license could be taken away. I will say I got creamed, but I advocated for it anyway. I have always had a strong commitment to the values fought for by the members of the Progressive Caucus, by the people in this room, and my values have not changed. 
What has changed is that I am more experienced. I have a broader understanding of the issues, the organizations, and the people that I believe, and I believe that will serve me well in this race. For the state legislature and the city council race, I came to the progressive ward caucuses and asked the progressive endorsement, and I've proudly served. I campaigned hard, knocking on every door, dropping campaign literature two or three times a campaign session. I knocked on doors and truly met all the people in my, well, everyone who was home in my district. I met mothers who had no access to childcare, college students who couldn't afford their rent. I met individuals who thought their felony conviction meant they couldn't vote until I explained to them that there was no law preventing them from registering. I met seniors who wanted their homes to stay affordable so they could stay in them. I talked to working families struggling to make ends meet. I offered rides to the polls. I stood outside all day and watched the people I asked to come be part of this process and support me turn out and elect me to office. And I owed them. I entered the campaign with words and important issues, but then I entered the service with their stories and my deep resolve to solve on their behalf. I left the city council at that time, 13 years ago, to start my family with my husband, Blake, who, who was here and doesn't want to be pointed out. <laughs> and we now have a 13-year-old son, Cole, and a nine-year-old daughter, Tess. And he and I have built our business, the Vermont Woodworking School. Uh, it's 10 years old, and we, it occupies a, a 15,000 square foot, three-story barn with 40 full-time students and about 12 employees. Uh, we teach young people furniture design and fine, fine woodworking in the apprenticeship tradition. I have stepped down from the position of director and hired an administrative director to, to manage the day-to-day -day operations to make room for my run for mayor. So that's where I've been, but where are we going? Today, I stand before you, and I'm proud to launch my campaign for mayor of Burlington because this election is about bringing people together. Through this campaign, and then as mayor if elected, I will work, Burling I will work to bring Burlington to again be that vibrant, that vibrant forward-thinking city where we are all so proud to live. It's time to bring our actions in Burlington back into line with our community values. Burlingtonians of all walks of life political parties, and throughout the city yearn for the opportunity to engage the issues that impact their lives and their communities. It's time to bring people back to the table. In this period of rapid development in our city, many community assets, community assets hang in the balance. Whether we're talking about Memorial Auditorium, the Moran plant, our public waterfront, or other city-owned property throughout the city, the people of Burlington have a right to determine what to do with them. The message of this campaign is clear. Burlington is not for sale. <laughs> These community assets should be leveraged to achieve a vision outlined by the people in a transparent community process, process not dispensed with and passed along to the highest bidder. We have a long tradition of community development that puts community at the center of all our decisions and that leverages our shared public assets to benefit all, not just a few. For decades, other, other communities have looked to Burlington as the model for how to better serve its people while meeting economic and social challenges. We no longer can lay claim to such praise. And we have too much at stake right now given the political climate in our country not to have a shared stake in our future as people. While the city's focus has been on development and the fate of our community assets, we are neglecting to successfully steward many other issues. Our schools need our attention. We must break down the silos separating the school district from City Hall. We must foster the best schools we can because the overall success of our community depends on it. Whether our goal is to meet the needs of seniors, I swear I'm almost done. So they can stay in their homes and access transportation, or ensure our working families have access to affordable quality childcare and take pride in making ends meet. Whether we are working to ensure that our new American families are given every opportunity in our education system and that out of school enrichment, enrichment is available to all kids. Whether we are working to ensure that we bring services into our neighborhoods to improve people's quality of life whether we're working to foster a vibrant community-based arts and music scene, we can work together 
to create innovative solutions ourselves. All parts of our city, the new north end, the south end, the old north end, center city, the hill section, downtown, and our institutions on the hill, each of our neighborhoods have unique needs. We need to empower our pl neighborhood planning assemblies again so that they may actively be involved with public engagement, city planning, and prioritizing city resources. We can do a lot more and do it better when people throughout the city are empowered. The people and much of the council are repeatedly finding themselves in a position of responding to a predetermined agenda, agenda offered by the mayor and a few members of the council. This is not how we do it in Burlington. Burlington has a long tradition that started in the 80s and 90s of putting power in the hands of people and prioritizing robust public engagement. If elected mayor, I attend, no, when I am elected mayor, I intend to provide the leadership to bring us back together and to a place of respectful dialogue to address our city's challenges and to chart our own future. I am running for mayor, but I cannot do it without all of your support. We will not get there to get, unless we bring, we will not, I'll start that again. We will not get there unless we bring people together throughout the city who share a common interest in changing the trajectory we are on. Together, we will all need to knock doors, encourage people to enter the political process, advocate for their interests, and engage. Thank you for support, for your support. Together, we can win. So before we do a brief Q and A, um, I wanted to invite up Free Menarship um, to speak on behalf of In Infinite. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. My name is Farid. Um, I'm a 20 year plus resident of Ward Five. I am also a lifelong anarchist. I don't vote usually for politicians. I vote for ballot items. This is the first electoral campaign that has inspired me to actually work really hard for a candidate. Because, uh, uh, not only because Infinite is just an awesome guy, he's, I, he's my brother, I consider him my brother, I'm his family, but also because the team that has come together is really inspiring to me. Uh, people uh, have been getting really passionate, um, and we are also committed to uh, running this campaign uh, and modeling for what Burlington should look like. Uh, like literally, it's gonna look like what Burlington has been looking like uh, with the changing demographics, but also our principles are first and foremost uh, about participatory government where everybody has a say in uh, decisions that impact their life. Um, and uh, I, have, I have been active uh, politically, even though I don't vote, um, in uh, labor organizing and social justice organizing. Um, uh, I, I do believe that we need to be able to build a movement that's strong enough to achieve change uh, regardless of who is in power. Uh, and I, I love Burlington. Uh, it is a city that shows up. We show up for livable wage for our immigrant communities, for our refugees. Uh, we show up to challenge corporate development. Um, uh, we show up to walk the picket lines when our union sisters and brothers are striking. And most recently, we show up and with so much passion to defend our public utilities against privatization. So we are a city where people mobilize and for justice and for equity. We deserve public servants who show up with the same tenacity and conviction for justice and equity as we do. Uh, our government, including local government, is not working for the people, and it definitely is not working for working people. The obstacles impending justice for all are greater than ever before, even in progressive Burlington. The current state of bureaucracy is, this is what happens. What you're seeing now is what happens when bigotry and racism go unchecked 
and unchallenged. When politics and politicians work for their own interests and the interests of corporations, and when progressive speak is not met with progressive actions. Organize for justice to draw hard lines in the sand to center those communities who are most impacted and to protect the most vulnerable. We must develop a participatory government structure where the people, not corporations, politicians, or developers, determine what growth and innovation looks like for our city. We need public servants who are led by and accountable to the grassroots, who are responsive and humble, who are not unafraid to listen and act and unapologetically take on historical injustices uh, and present-day injustices. And we need uh, people in government who will embrace requests, critiques, and criticisms from all communities as an opportunity to do better. Now, Burlington's working family has a historic opportunity to elect a leader of working class background, one of our own, with a genuine understanding of the challenges that Burlington working people face every day, and who, one who actively shares our struggle for collective liberation. Now, every single one of us here is involved in movement to change, to make the world a better place, movement of resistance, and movement uh, that challenges injustices. Uh, one word that is really important to me, and I believe it's shared by everyone, is solidarity. And we need to show what solidarity looks like. Um, uh, and Infinite has been giving me a, a very inspirational example of like what solidarity looks like. Um, from walking the picket lines with striking bus drivers um, when it was minus 20 degrees in the morning, uh, to sitting in during UVM trustees meeting, organizing to keep the uh, VMH uh, children's room. Uh, every May Day, he came to Montpelier and helped me feed people who went to the rally there. Um, and most recently, he walked the 14 miles from with migrant justice from <laughs> That's visible, but what I, what he really shines on is the behind the scene, the tireless effort and the thankless effort of organizing in his MBAs. He worked really hard to uh, even move the mayor when uh, the ballot question for non-citizen voting uh, was 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 voted on, uh, and that that thankless and tireless work that Infinite has done. Um, my point is, Infinite is. A, a leader that show up, and he backs his convictions with actions, uh, and his campaign is back a growing group of people, uh, passionate community organizers, uh, and we are all committed to restore public trust in the process. We want to encourage individual and community self-determination and transform government into an accountable, transparent, equitable, and accessible process. Uh, it is our belief uh, that the whole of society will be healthier when we effectively listen to the grassroots, pull from the margins, and lift from the bottom. Uh, we, uh, we, we are not just to have a seat on the table, we want to flip the table and put the people in the driver's seat. Another thing that is possible, a people city hall is necessary, and our new movement to make that happen needs you. Thank you.
Uh, my name is Albert Petrarca, and I'm from Ward 3 here. And um, Ms. Driscoll, you said that Burlington was not for sale, when in fact it is for sale. Um, uh, Don Sinix has bought the uh, Burlington Town Center. Palmer Lou is buying City Hall Park. Um, Eric Farrell was buying Cambrian Rise. And, and there's been an anti-gentrification movement fighting this for the past three years, and we don't remember seeing you there. Now at the 11th hour, you're coming out and saying you want to be opposed to these things um, that the mayor has been pushing. And didn't 10 months ago you supported Jane Nodell, who was the mayor's shepherd in getting all of these gentrification projects through. So in the past 10 months, are you saying that you've had an epiphany now about uh, your previous support and uh, your silence on this? And if so, you've had an epiphany, can you tell us where you now differ with the mayor and will you please apologize to the city for having supported the mayor up until now? Can I just ask a clarifying question about what we're doing now? Can you explain? Um, we're taking questions for how long? We so we are taking questions for six more minutes. Um, and that was a long question, but. So I'll make my answer brief. Um, I'm running a campaign about unity, and I'm going to stay away from topics that divide us through the election. Um, and people who this. So, you know, um, I, I don't think we have, we have about five minutes left, um, and I would like to yield to the next question. And I actually think it'd be best if we both answer your question. Uh, I, I think it was Ali, and then this gentleman right here, and then this fellow right here. Uh, for speed's sake, why don't we start lining up? I would like both of you to please come in forward. Um, and this is a very simple and uh, direct question. Actually, two questions. So the first one is, do you know the population of Burlington, the exact number, and also the, our budget, current budget? And also, what are your plans for the new government if you get elected? But I, uh, I know our school budget is approximately 60 million, and it was 28 million uh, before. And I'm uh, not, I'm not going to go out on a limb and try to uh, give the number of our exact city budget. Um, and the, the second question. Oh yes. Um, so first, I want to go back to the coalition with Liberal City, and you know, I've been given an opportunity to talk about something. And I, I yielded it, and I don't. Th I think that was a mistake. But I also don't want to take up a whole bunch of time. So can we extend beyond our six minutes? Sure. Okay. Okay. First, let's talk about the New North End. I think we have about a third of the city's population in the New North End. It's a significant portion of the city. And um, there is a lot. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for us to be paying more close attention to what's going on in the New North End. We have a rising senior population. We have young families looking to have their starter homes there. Um, we have transportation issues where you might have to walk a mile and a half to the bus line. Um, we have a levy center that could be so much more than it is right now. Um, it's wonderful that we have the Miller Center, but it's not enough. We have new American families. Uh, in large numbers in the New North End, and we have a largely ignored end of town uh, where we can be doing a lot more. I've been very inspired by Ollie's campaign to get out into the New North End and bring people uh, to the pro into the process um, and begin to talk about what's possible. And I look forward to working with you on that, uh, whether I'm the uh, mayor or not. Um, when it comes to the process of the Coalition for the Livable City, I find the question a little discouraging because of a lot of reasons. One, as I watched from the sidelines uh, while we began to hear about this small project, uh, we began to hear about it several years after it had been in its process. Um, and that I found to be very discouraging and disheartening. 
And I saw uh, a group of people, the coalition, come together and speak out against the mall. And I was very, that brought me great hope to see people organize and come together and really challenge that process. Um, I stayed back and wasn't sure if I was able to engage um, the coalition because, um, you know, there's a group of people involved and I wasn't sure I'd be welcome at the table. Um, I thought it was a very good process and I withheld um, commenting on it towards the end, right before the ballot. What we ended up voting on when it came time to vote for the mall uh, was something much different than what was presented. And I give my congratulations and actually did so publicly to the coalition for significantly moving the project to something that I could support. We gained affordable, uh, gained affordable housing. We had the mall turned, I, turned inside out. We got the community uh, with a $500,000 settlement. There are a lot of good things that happen. And in the end, I congratulated the coalition for contributing to democracy and moving us forward. I thought it was a very good thing. I think now we have a 67%, we had uh, you know, what the mayor's referring to as an overwhelming support for the project. I think he's mistaken that there's overwhelming support for the project. I think there are people like me th and throughout the city who uh, voted with a lot of reluctance. We voted because you don't turn away $200 million of investment in your community. We voted yes. And we voted yes because the project had improved and it looked better and because it was, it was going to offer housing. And as we look forward with the project for the mall, I think we ask ourselves, we have an opportunity. And whoever? Whoever's in the position of carrying this forward, whoever's the next mayor, which I hope is me, I'm ready for the job, which is to make sure that this creates jobs in our community when we build it, and that we stick to the plan for having affordable housing, and that what is built is good for Burlington. Um, so. Um, and then, you know, yeah, I will leave it at that because I've taken a lot of time. So, I'll lead to your question about the city budget. I'm with Karina on that. There's way too many zeros uh, in that budget uh, for me to so wrap my head around right now. Um, but the uh, school budget, actually, I think is a little higher than 60. I think it's in the 80s, uh, somewhere. It was 28 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Dan, can you speak a little louder? Yes, I can. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to your question about the new North End, um, what I intend to do, actually, is to defer to the people in the new North End. Um, I, I know that there's some, there's some people in the new North End way smarter than I am about their, na their neighborhood and their community. Um, they, they, I think they've just been ignored. Uh, so we need to set up processes uh, for, you know, for them to be heard. And you know, to uh, hats off to the uh, coalition for Liberal City, um, uh, the one thing I'll say about the uh, mall project was that um, my biggest disappointment was uh, that I did question one of our city council leaders about uh, community development, uh, I mean a community benefits agreement for that project, uh, and they said yes, that there was one, um, and that was not true. Uh, so uh, that was really my biggest uh, disappointment because I know we, we need to have you know development at some point, you know, that needs to be well thought out, and uh, the, the people, you know, the people of Burlington need to benefit uh, before anyone else comes in to the community and benefits from a development like that. Thank you. Uh, just one quick process note before we go on to the next question. I think we'll have time for two more questions and then we're going to need to cut it off so that people can vote. If you already know who you're going to vote for, if you need to leave early, any of that stuff, um, you can turn your ballot in at the back of the room. Okay. Okay. And hand barb your ballot. Did everybody hear that? Do I need to repeat it? Um, if you need to leave, 
You can do so through that rear door and hand your ballot in before you go. Otherwise, hang on to it. Two more questions, uh, brief if you can. Thanks. Uh, my name is Eric Meyer. I live in Lakeside in uh, Ward 5. Uh, it's a working class lakefront neighborhood that we're very proud of. Um, and I'm a democratic socialist, so I'm the first person to talk about the working class and, and share, share class issues. At the same time, I think that um, we haven't talked enough about social issues and, and that often gets lumped in. Um, so I have a specific question about that. Um, trans women of color are one of the most endangered groups in America in terms of, and this is not an abstract issue, in terms of leaving um, their homes. Um, and I'm passionate about ending white supremacy as well as working on queer and trans justice and, and those are, are all intersecting, but I, I just wonder for that particular group, um, as an example, what each of you would do to, to protect them. Thank you for that question. And uh, you know, the, the work that needs to be done about the trans community uh, is something that I'm, I'm still really learning about. Um, uh, and I think that one of my ideas, um, uh, not, not just for uh, the trans community, but you know, um, sort of domestic violence, you know, generally speaking, you know, another blind spot of mine that I'm really you know, trying to uh, you know, learn more about um, is uh, to develop, you know, you know, Burlington is still small enough uh, that we can hold each other accountable, you know, um, you know, neighbor to neighbor, you know, uh, block to block, you know, uh, and so I, I think we have an opportunity, you know, to develop, you know, peace teams, you know, um, put resources into, you know, teams of folks, you know, that can respond, you know, to um, situations, you know, you know that you're talking about, you know, where, where people are feeling unsafe, you know, feeling unwelcome and, and feeling harassed. Um, so, uh, th you know, there's some work, you know, at, at the ground level, you know, the you know, cities around the world, you know, are, are developing ways of, you know, uh, addressing public safety issues um, non-violently. Uh, and so uh, that would be, you know, something that I would uh, really like to invest public dollars into. So um, on this issue, I think this is one where our youth are really leading the way. Um, I think generationally, uh, children my children's age understand um, that there is not a gender binary in a way that uh, my generation grew up understanding it to be. And I think the best thing that we can do is follow the lead of our young people and ask the question, how do we do better? So. Thank you. Thank you for seeding your question to my question. Um, it's about affordable housing um, for both of you. Corinna, you mentioned that the Mall Project gave us affordable housing. My understanding is that affordable housing is really a one bedroom apartment for $1,100. My question for both of you is, what are you gonna do about creating real affordable housing and not giving away important um, pieces of land for um, lip service affordable housing that is actually raising the rents for most people? <laughs> and it has to be important in this community. And it troubles me that we continue to talk about it as if we're solving it. We continue to speak as if, look at how these innovations are solving the housing crisis, solving the homeless problem. You know, we have affordable housing for X percent of the people in this community, and so we're doing okay. But what I will say is that when I was growing up, I never once heard someone say, well, the shelters are full. And now we live in a community where the shelters are full. And that's unacceptable. Uh, it's not a compassion, we're a compassionate society here in Burlington and we need to be leading the way for the rest of the nation. We continue to provide innovative solutions for homelessness, but we're not getting there. And then on the other end, because there is a big middle, and that's what Janice is talking about. On the other end of the spectrum, well, there's 
the far end of the spectrum, but the people who are, who are falling into the category of being able to be provided affordable housing opportunities. We have lots of apartments that serve that middle and upper working class families. But we've got a huge sect, section of people in Burlington that are falling between. They are fighting every day. They're choosing between rent, food on the table, childcare, extracurricular activities they cannot afford to make ends meet. And they're invisible to much of the establishment in this community. And that's very troubling to me and it will absolutely be a number one priority if I'm elected, when I'm elected mayor. And um, I would just, let's see what else, uh, you know, I think we talked about the donut. It, that's not really a donut. It's just the people in the middle that aren't able to. Did you get your question answered? Well, the question was more about development processes in the city, and there seems to be a, yes. a tendency to continue to allow development that's bad for the environment, bad for um, the uh, quality of life, and does not actually um, make life better for low-income people, and yet right. we're hearing that it is. Right, and so we look through the community and we see ribbon cutting after ribbon cutting. We see buildings going up, and yet we still are wondering, there are a whole lot of families who are saying, what good does this do for me? We can celebrate the bond rating going down, but if, you're, you know, if your landlord is going to charge you the rent anyway, it's not really doing you any good that he is saving on property taxes. It's, uh, it's time that we stop pretending like everything is great. And, you know, and it's very clear to me that this campaign is going to be about um, raising the curtain on this issue. So thank you for asking. <laughs> So the, the, the affordable housing issue is uh, tough, tough, uh, crack, hard, hard to be a developer these days, right? Um, <laughs> so, so I'm actually, uh, I, I actually think we should call out uh, some of the other uh, really big institutions um, that uh, take up a lot of space in our community um, because they don't pay taxes, right? Um, and so. You know, we have like this uh, really small pot of money that we call pilot funds, it's paid on pay and low taxes. It's sort of a, a goodwill um, on, on the part of, you know, people like UVM and, and others uh, to, to help the city, you know, uh, attend to some of, the, some, some of our needs. I, I think um, that we can get a little bit more from those institutions. I think, uh, it's about time that some of these institutions you know, can pay a little bit more of their fair share of uh, the payment of the taxes. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of money out there. Um, and you know, the other side of uh, affordable housing is how much money we make you know, uh, in terms of uh, our minimum wage, right? So, uh, Um, 
so because there were some questions, um, what you're voting for is whether or not the Progressive Party is going to endorse a candidate. Both candidates are running as independents, in case that wasn't clear or anybody didn't know that. Um, this is a vote for a progressive endorsement.
but um, of course you're still in the race and you never said you'd be out of it. So I look forward, and so this is gonna be how it is, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, no, I, I do just wanna say that this, this room full of people um, showing up tonight, um, it, we've re-energized a movement that needs to happen in Burlington, and if we're going to get there, we're going to have to get there together, one way or the other, and I look forward to working with you uh, as we campaign towards March 6th. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. I just wanted to um, echo some of what people have already said. My most sincere thanks to Infinite and Karina for being here, for seeking the progressive endorsement. Um, it's not hard to be like discontent with something, but it's another thing entirely to step up and say, I undertake to do something about that. Um, I undertake the burden of running for office and the commitment and the courage that goes with that. So I just want to thank um, both Karina, um, Infinite, and all of our candidates that are running for office for your courage, for your commitment, and your willingness to fight to make this a better community. We, all of us may have differing ideas in this room about how to get there, but what we have in common is that we want to make Burlington a better community. So thank you all so much. I think a better community is possible. Um, we have to work together to make it happen, though. Thank you.